Hi there! In this video we're going to be refinishing a Gibson Les Paul Jr. Uh, so this is the same guitar you might have seen me strip the paint off in another video. Uh, so this is the limited edition one they did back in 2016, so it's got two pickups like a Jr. doesn't normally have. Uh, so it's just a limited edition they did and I don't think it lasted very long. Uh, but that was one of these guitars, it was originally a sunburst finish, uh, so we've stripped all that off. And then this video starts from where we've got a blank bare guitar, uh, so it's going to take you through the whole process of green filling, and then showing the colour coats, the clear coats, and then wet sanding and buffing, and then reassembling again to get to this point here. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the video, and let's get started. So here's the guitar we're working on today. Uh, this is a Twin Pickup Junior, uh, the single coil version which they did in 2016. Uh, you may have seen me stripping the paint off this in one of my other videos. Uh, this is the same guitar, and all I've done since that video to this one is put the masking tape down. Otherwise it's just as we left it in the other video. Uh, so you can see I've masked off the front of the headstock because we don't want to get any colour on that. And I've also masked off the edge of where the black head plate comes down to. Because uh, I'd like to keep that black edge as well. And we've also got the final tape down the sides of the fretboard because we don't want to paint that either. And otherwise it's, like I said, as we just as we left it. I've got a hook in the bottom here to hang it on for when we spray. So the first step is to actually paint this white. Uh, we wanted a very thin coat of white just to cover this colour of the mahogany. Uh, so that's going to give us a nice blank background to start our colour on. Because uh, if we try to use a colour on this, it's going to be much too dark. Because the mahogany colour will shine through. So it's important this coat of white is quite thin. Uh, because we don't want to fill any of the grain. It's important we keep this open grain because this is going to be filled later on. Uh, even after the colour goes on, we're going to fill the grain at that stage. Which is a bit different to how you would normally approach uh, a typical refinish. But TV yellow is a bit different. Uh, so the sequence of events is going to be we spray it white first. Then we leave it a couple of days, spray it the colour, and then leave it a couple of days, and then we put the filler on. Uh, we get all the filler sorted, and then we can put, go on to our clear coats finally. And that's what gives it the contrasting colour of the grain fill through the colour coats. Because otherwise, if you put, put the grain filler on first, you'll end up spraying your grain filler the same colour as everything else, and it'll just blend in. So here we are now in the spray room. And I've loaded up with my white primer to spray this with. Uh, you could also use white nitrocellulose paint, but I think primer is going to cover up this colour of mahogany a bit quicker than white paint would. Uh, but we need to be careful that we don't spray too much because it will fill the grain quite easily, which is not what we want. Uh, so the guitar is hanging on this spray stand here, and this allows me to get to all angles of it. Um, the camera is actually on a tripod, there's no one operating it, so you're going to have to bear with me on the camera angle. I may be blocking it sometimes, so and you might not be able to see much, uh, but hopefully give you an idea of what I'm doing. Uh, we're not looking for perfection with this white coat, this is just literally to make it white. Uh, we can make it look nice afterwards, so we're just trying to block out this colour really, of the mahogany. So now we've finished spraying the white, and we've got this, which is just what we wanted. We've got nice open grain still, but a solid white background with no mahogany colour showing through. And show you the back, which is just the same. So up next, we're going to spray our yellow coats. And then once the yellow coats are done, we can do, go on to grain filling. Uh, the yellow coats are just going to be in the same way, uh, just very lightly as we can, until we've got just enough of the colour on there. So I've now sprayed the guitar yellow. I didn't get any footage of that, but it went on just the same way as the white did. So very lightly, and just using as little as possible to get a nice even coverage. Uh, as you can see, all the grain is still nice and open, none of that's been filled. And what we're going to do now is the grain filling. I've actually already done most of the front, and I'll flip the guitar over now and show you how it's going. So you should be able to just about tell that inside the grain is now this kind of muddy brown colour. You can see the grain filler in the genomatic holes there. Uh, so it's a bit difficult to grain fill on a body which has already had some coats on it. Uh, so it has to be done a bit slowly and with lots of coats. So I've had a couple on here already and I'm just going to talk through how I've been doing this now. So this is the grain fill I've been using. Uh, this is quite readily available over here in the UK. Uh, it's made by Westins, and this is the oak colour. It also comes in mahogany colour, which is way too red for this, and natural, which you could just about get away with, but it's not quite dark enough, I don't think. So to use it, 
uh, you've got to thin it down a little bit. Uh, you can use it straight out the can. I know some people do do that, but I find it doesn't just doesn't do quite as good a job that way and ends up pulling out of the grain as you rub it off. Whereas if you thin it down a bit, it gets wiped out deep down in there and doesn't come out so easily. Uh, so I thinned it down to this sort of consistency uh, using white spirit. Uh, that's called mineral spirits if you're over in the States. But if you're in the States, you'll probably have a completely different product to this because I think this is a UK made thing. And, but obviously whatever you use, you can apply it the same way and look for the same sort of colour, that kind of muddy brown colour. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I apply this now. So I've got the thin mixture here and I just put some on the top like this. And then I'll spread that about all over the place before then later on using a credit card to force it down into the grain. So I'm going to actually apply this to the whole guitar in one go on the back anyway, the whole back I should say. So I'm going to go from here all the way up to there and by the time I've got up to here I'll be ready to start scraping off down there or thereabouts anyway. I like it to harden up a little tiny bit before you try and take it off otherwise I find it just comes straight out without filling the grain. Uh, so I'm going to just keep going, just applying it like this. And later on we'll use the squeegee to force it down into the grain. And also scrape some the excess off, because there's going to be a lot for that, as you can tell. That's what I do with the flat surfaces, the contour is a bit more difficult to get to stick down in there. Uh, this is a little harder than if you're filling natural wood, because the lacquer kind of is a bit more slippery. So the grain filler pulls away from it a bit easier than it would if it was natural wood. That's why you need to keep the coats as thin as you can and not too glossy. So I'll, I'm going to have, have to repeat this multiple times. This is the first one on the back now. So I covered that ground a bit quicker than I was expecting, so I'm actually going to leave this probably five minutes now just to, for it to harden up a little bit before I try and scrape it off with the squeegee and as I'm scraping it off with the squeegee it also forces the grain filler down in there. I don't need to worry about getting it anywhere I don't want it because it does wipe off very easily and obviously everywhere's got to be filled anyway. Okay so it's been a couple of minutes now and I'm going to start using the squeegee or in this case I'm going to use this old debit card. Uh, so this works really well and you don't have to worry too much about digging in hard because plastic's not so tough. So if you did this with a metal scraper, yeah, it could cause some damage. But with a credit card, it's pretty safe. You can see this. I'm going kind of diagonally across the grain. Uh, lots of people say if you go with the grain, you'll pull the filler out. I don't always find that to be the case, uh, especially with this mahogany. Uh, but the generally diagonally is the accepted way of doing it, like this, uh, across the grain. And you can also go straight across also. But if you need to go straight along the grain, I, I don't find it causes that many problems. So I've given it about three coats of grain filler now and it's pretty much there. Uh, I'm not going to give it any more and it's had a little while to dry. Uh, I've just been over the surface as well with a cloth dampened with lighter fluid or naphtha uh, just to remove off any excess which is left on the surface because you really don't want to have any left over on the surface because uh, you'll get these kind of shadowed areas and it won't look good. As soon as you put a clear coat on it it will become very obvious. So you want to wipe off the excess without actually pulling any out of the grain. Uh, so that's all done and there's no grain, no, none left on the surface. Uh, so I've also cleaned out these holes as well, which is important because it's much easier to clean these out before it gets a clear coat on. And you don't have to worry about any lacquer cracking or flaking away. Uh, so this has all been cleared out as well, um, because these were obviously filled with grain filler. Same as the tuna holes and around the edges of the pickups, uh, routes, and the control cavity on the back. So basically just removing any grain filler from anywhere you don't want it. So it's now time to do the clear coat on the guitar, and I've attached this spray jig 
Uh, this goes into my stand, so this metal pole inserts into the stand and it gives me a way of rotating the guitar by just touching this metal rather than touching the actual guitar itself. Uh, so Because when I was hanging it earlier I was having to hold on to the neck and that's not so easy when you've got clear coat on because you don't want to leave your fingerprint in the clear coat if it's not fully hardened yet in between passes with the gum. Uh, so this gives away so you don't have to touch the guitar at all, uh, which reduces the chance of any dust getting on the guitar as well. And because the guitar's not moving, that also reduces the chance of dust as well because it's being held stationary rather than swaying about and moving as you try and access different parts of it. So it's a much nicer way of spraying. Um, and I've also put some new masking tape down because the old stuff was covered in grain filler. So I've cleaned off all that. And I've taken the, head, the masking tape off the headstock also because that's going to get sprayed with gloss rather than the satin it currently is. So here's the guitar in the spray stand. And you can see it's being held at this current angle by that bolt just over there on the edge. See that goes, that bolt passes through the metal pole and that holds it at this angle. And at this angle is the angle I'll spray the back from. So I'll be on the other side where the light is and shooting towards the camera. And when I undo that bolt, it will lie flat uh, with the top facing up. And that's how I'll spray the top of the guitar. So from those two positions, that should give me access to every bit of the guitar to spray it. So when you're clear coating, uh, a guitar with nitrocellulose, uh, three passes is, equates to one coat. So a pass is just what it sounds like. You pass the guitar while spraying. So you'll pass the whole guitar, spraying the whole thing. Then you'll give it probably 30 seconds, something like that. And then you'll make another pass over the whole guitar. You can do that in a different direction, going from that way to that way, or it can go from up to down uh, to make sure you cover every little bit of the guitar. Uh, so we're going to do three passes on the back, then change the angle and do three passes on the top, uh, rather than trying to keep changing the angle for each pass. So here it is after four coats of clear coat um, and now what I've done is sand the whole thing with 600 using a rubber block, uh, just large rubber um, with 600 on and I need the rounded areas I used one of these which is quite handy, a uh, scotch bike pad so on the on the contours here and on the back of the neck that's quite useful. Uh, so it's all nice and smooth now, uh, there's a few little open pores still which we've missed during the filling uh, which I'm not at all surprised about because filling the grain like this uh, after it's got some black on already is a lot more difficult than when you're filling on bare wood uh, but it's not a big deal they're not too severe and they'll fill up with subsequent coats yeah so it's just going to spray a couple more coats then and then we'll rub it back one more time and then we'll uh, spray a thin coat at the end and that should be it then uh, I don't sand at all in between the coats so I sprayed the four with no sanding at all um, and then just did some level sanding now we've got a nice should be able to see it nice level service there So I've now sprayed the remaining coats of lacquer, so we're up to six, uh, which is going to be our total before we go on to the thinned lacquer. Uh, so what we're going to do now, this has been a couple of days since I stopped spraying, and you can see I've got this kind of orange peely texture, uh, which is normal and to be expected, because the lacquer I've been using has been quite thick in viscosity. So I always use thicker lacquer to start off with, uh, for the, well, most of the coats, uh, so we don't have to wait ages for the solvent to gas off, uh, so it dries quicker when it's thicker. And also it builds quicker as well, so you don't have to spray so many coats. So we, could, we got away with just six coats, rather than having to spray something like nine or something like that if it was heavily thinned lacquer. Um, so we have enough lacquer on this guitar now for it to be just left for a month and then wet sanded and buffed after that month. Uh, but to do that, we would need to uh, then fine sand this with something like a thousand grit paper or 800. And that's going to be really hard work to sand through this orange peel with such fine paper. Uh, so to avoid that, we're going to do sand this now with 400 paper. Uh, so that'll go much quicker and we'll get rid of the orange peel in no time compared to the finer papers you'd have to use and we're going to do that we, we can do that because we're going to spray one final coat of thinned lacquer afterwards uh, so when we spray this thinned lacquer it will dissolve all the sanding scratches left by the coarser 400 paper uh, so it's a way of being able to minimize on the wet sanding really and then after that wet that final thinned coat is sprayed we can just leave this guitar for a month or so and then start off with hopefully a thousand grit sandpaper and it'll go very quickly as well because there won't be too much to level at all. That's the plan anyway. So I've been saying wet sanding all along, but for actually for this stage I'm going to be dry sanding because uh, wet sanding is the traditional way of doing it. Yeah, we use water to stop the paper clogging, but nowadays there's some really good high-tech advanced sandpapers which just don't clog at all and they just do a really good job. You just use dry and then you don't have to worry about water swelling grain and things like that. Uh, so that's what I've been going to be doing on this one. I've just started on this area here and it's levelling in no time. Uh, I'm just using a couple of small blocks, a few different sizes. Uh, this one for any small areas, like around here on the neck. And this is just a rubber eraser. And I'll use a bigger one, like this one, for the flatter areas.
and I've got some cut blocks as well and different other blocks uh, for the different bits. Uh, obviously you don't want to try and sand these contours with a block because you'll end up burning through. Uh, so these will be done by fingers. And the side I'll do with the small block I just showed you. Uh, so this is the paper I'm using and it's really good. Uh, it's 400 made by 3M and the pack looks like this. Uh, it just doesn't clog at all. Uh, so because doing this stage can be a nightmare using cheap sandpaper because it can just keep clogging. Even when used wet, it can still clog and then actually the clogs which are left on the paper will leave a bad finish as well because they will actually scratch the finish. Uh, so it's much better to use good quality paper. It's not that expensive and well worth it. Here's a close up of what we've been doing. So you can see this area is all done now. There's no little shiny spots or anything and it's all nice and level. Um, the shiny spots show that it's not quite level yet because it'll be where the block hasn't got down to and the sandpaper. So you can see these little dots around here. That's where it isn't quite level yet, so it needs a bit more sanding. And uh, particularly up here as well. You can see it just shining in the light because uh, that's not been avoided by the sandpaper yet. So it's still shiny like it was when it came out of the gun. You can see it especially down here because I haven't quite got to there yet. Uh, so we're just going to keep going till there's no shiny spots left and everything is all nice and like this area down here. So it's been a couple of days since I sprayed that final coat now, and I've just taken it off the spray stand and removed all the masking tape off the fretboard. And you can see on this headstock, how we've got a good result. There's not too much texture in there at all. So that's going to polish out easily with the thousand grit. I've got a little bit of lacquer watches snuck in underneath the masking tape, uh, but that's not a problem. That will clean off easy enough. And if you have a look at the body, you can see we've got no real imperfections. If you hold it across here, kind of view across this side, you can see there's no little like, kind of bumps or anything like that, or any open texture of the grain. So all the grain is nicely filled, and we've got a reasonably good surface to start our polishing. Uh, but we're not going to do that just yet, we're going to give it probably another couple of weeks and then we can start off with a thousand grit and work through the grits from there, from 1500, then 2000 and then finally we'll go to the buffing. So in the meantime we've just got to be patient and leave it. So it's been about four weeks now and I've just wet sanded the top of this guitar now so far. Uh, I've also done the neck as well so I'm just, I'm just going to show you what I've been doing uh, on the back. Yeah, but you can see this is now all fairly dull. Uh, but there's no shiny spots at all, which is good. Uh, so that means everything's nice and level. Uh, this has just been done with 1,000 grit so far. Um, so I'm going to follow up with 1,200, 1,500, 2,000 before going on to buffing. Uh, but before that, as I mentioned, I'm going to do the back. So I'm just going to demonstrate on this part here where you can see the light reflecting off it. You can see there's a slight spray texture here. It's very minor, it's not at all bumpy, it's just not very glossy. And uh, you'll never get a glossy surface unless you've got a properly level surface first. So the wet sanding with this grade, the thousands, just to flatten everything before we move on to polishing later on. Uh, so I'm just going to use a large rubber block here and some 1000 grit wet and dry paper. And this is a good quality one made by Norton, uh, so it cuts really quickly. So I'm just wetting this piece of paper now. You can see it's fairly wet. You don't want it dripping wet, not probably not quite as wet as it is now, especially near any kind of open edges because that can absorb the water and then that can in turn crack the wood and the lacquer. Uh, so you don't want it too wet at all and you don't want any standing water kind of sitting there a long time on areas like this. Uh, but I'll, this, I've, having done the top it's gone really quickly so I'm just going to show you how quickly it goes because we haven't got a, we've got a good surface to start with. Okay, so now I'm going to wipe that off with a piece of kitchen towel and see what we've got. So you should be able to see that there's no shiny areas there now at all. Uh, you can see a couple of little shiny spots up this air, up the area here. But generally it's all nice and flat now, you can see it now. Just there towards the edge, there's a few shiny spots which is we haven't gone quite low enough yet, but the rest of it is all done in just in that short time. So we've just got to carry on going over the rest of the back like that, and then the thousand great paper will be done. So 
So as you can see, I've now buffed the guitar. Uh, it's come up nicely, very happy with it. All the pores are filled and got a nice level, smooth, shiny finish. Uh, so our next step now will be assembling the guitar. And firstly, I'm going to insert the Junomatic tailpiece studs. Um, so this can be a bit of a whiskey job uh, if you don't take the proper precautions. Uh, so you've got to make sure there's no lacquer sticking around out the edge here, which could catch the post as it goes in. Because uh, if it does, it will crack and you'll get a crack going off one of these directions off it. And it'll look awful. And it's really painful when that happens. Um, so to prevent that, I've actually countersunk these holes slightly uh, to remove any lacquer from the edges. So I've used a normal countersink tool like this. And I've heated that up with a blowtorch. You could use a heat gun if you find that easier. Uh, and then not so hot that it really sets fire to the finish, uh, but just so it warms it, so it does less light to chip as you use it. Because if you use this cold, this will also chip the finish. So make sure you heat it up first. And I've just done that and on both all four of these to remove any lacquer from the edges. So now they should press in fairly easily. And it's obviously very important that you've got your ground wire in there as well. Uh, so make sure you do that first. And here it is finally with strings on. So I've just given this a setup also and it plays nicely now. So it plays as good as it looks. And here's the back. So you can see we've got a, see the window reflecting in there. So I think it's a job well done. all for this one thank you very much for watching if you've enjoyed the video please make sure to like it and if you'd like to see more content like this please do subscribe and hopefully i'll see you on the next one thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon